All right, for this video, we're gonna multiply and divide rational expressions. But before we can do that, we gotta review stuff about fractions. Okay, so to start with, if I wanna simplify 36 over 24, we always try to find something that they both have in common. Or in other words, we look at the factors of 36 and 24. So my factors of 36, right? I know that it's got a two. So if I take 36 divided by two, that gives me 18. And I can divide it by two again, that gives me 9, and then 9 is 3 times 3. So another way of writing 36 is writing 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. All right? Well, then I can do that same thing for 24. So 24, I can divide by 2, and we get 12. And then if I divide 12 by 2, we get 6, and then 6 is 2 times 3. So these are all the factors of 36, and the factors... Um, of 24, not all the factors, but it, you know, I can multiply these to get 36 and multiply these to get 24. And if I have something on top and on bottom, right, like 2 divided by 2, that cancels to 1. So that means that these 2's cancel, these 2's cancel, and then my 3's cancel. So that leaves me with the 3 over 2. So that means 36 over 24 simplifies to 3 over 2. I know you usually do that kind of in your head, but if we draw it all out, this is what we're actually doing in our head. All right. If I multiply fractions, I can do the same thing because really this, if I multiply, I multiply straight across. So this ends up being 18 times 30 over 5 times 9. And I can do that on the calculator in your head or whatever, and then you can simplify. Or I can go ahead and do my factor tree here or the simplest factors. All right. So then 18... I can write 18 as 2 times 3 times 3, right? Because 18 divided by 2 is 9, and then 9 is 3 times 3, right? And then I can write 30, right? 30 divided by 2 is 15, and then 15 is 3 times 5, right? 5 I can't do anything with, so we're going to leave that guy the same. And then 9 is 3 times 3. Right? Anything I have on top and on bottom is going to cancel. So, for example, these two threes can cancel out those two threes. My five can cancel out. And then I'm left with two, two, and three up top and nothing on the bottom. So that means this whole fraction, when I multiply, it's going to end up as two times two times three over one, right? Which is... 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, or 12 over 1, which is just 12. Okay, so we find the factors up top, find the factors on the bottom, anything on top and bottom cancels, all right? I know this seems kind of weird, but it'll be very helpful when we get to our rational expressions, all right? And then division, okay? For division, if I'm dividing fractions, we got to do our copy change flip. So that means I copy the first fraction, so I copy this one just like it is, change to multiplication, right, and then I'm going to flip the second one. So that becomes 9 over 4. Copy, change, flip, right? Then I can do the same thing. Okay, so the 1 is going to stay the same, right? 9, I can make it 3 times 3. The 3 stays the same, and then 4, I can make 2 times 2. The only thing that's going to cancel here is my 3 and 1, 3 up top. So that leaves me with 1 times 3 over 2 times 2, 3 fourths. Okay, so simplifying, top and bottom cancels. Multiplying, anywhere on top, either fraction. Anywhere on bottom, either fraction cancels. And then for division, we copy, change, flip, and then do the same thing that we did for multiplying. Okay, the other thing we have to review is factoring because you're going to have to factor because we start working with uh, expressions that have x's in them and variables as opposed to just numbers. All right, so the first type of factoring that you always look for, you always, always, always look for a GCF. That's your greatest common factor. So for this example, I have 3x to the 4th plus 9x. All right, 3 goes into 3 and 9, right? So that means I have a 3 in common. And they both have x's. They both have at least one x, because this one's got four x's, this one's got one. So my GCF is a 3x. All right? If I take out a 3x, if I divide by 3x, 3x to the fourth divided by 3x leaves me with just 
x cubed, right? I had 3 divided by 3 is 1. I had 4x's. I took 1 out, right? 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then I had 1x, but I took it out, so I'm left with just 3, right? So I just factored this expression by taking out the 3x, right? So those are equivalent. Okay, the second thing you can look for a pattern is your difference of squares, right? So difference means subtraction, so it's got to be minus sign in there. And then squares is talking about your perfect squares, right? And that means that it's like 16, like 16 is 4 squared, 36 is 6 squared, 100 is 10 squared. So looking for those perfect squares. And then x squared is a perfect square because I'm squaring something. So if I have two perfect squares with subtraction in the middle, I can use my difference of squares pattern, right? So the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 16 is 4. So then my pattern is going to be x plus 4, x minus 4, every single time. It's just a pattern. If you can recognize, oops, I didn't realize I was out of the screen. If you can recognize the difference of squares in your polynomial, then you can skip straight to your pattern there. Okay. Then the other two uh, forms we're going to look at are what we call trinomials because you've got three terms in them. The first one is what I call a plain Jane, and that's when you have 1x squared out front. So if I have a 1 there, I'm going to go straight to parentheses, and I'm going to put an x in both parentheses. And I'm going to look for two numbers that multiply to my constant and add to the middle term. So in this case, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to a 12 but add to a negative 6. All right? So multiply to 12 but add to a negative 6. All right? And actually this one, I, mean, I messed up on this one. We'll make this negative 6, and we'll make this an 8. That's my fault. I don't know what I was thinking. So I'm going to add to 8 and multiply to a negative 6. And so, or sorry, multiply to 8, add to a negative 6. I'm getting all flustered here. All right? And that means that my numbers are going to be a negative 4 and a negative 2 because I have to multiply to a positive, so that's to be the same sign. But then to get to a negative 6, I'm going to have to have two negative numbers. I'm going to have x minus 4, x minus 2. All right? Bottoms up is a pattern or a type of way of factoring. Uh, if you like to use the X method, that's perfectly fine. All right, use whatever you like to use, but this is just a cheat that I use whenever we have something that's not 1X squared. So in this case, I have a 2 out front. All right, so to do bottoms up, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that 2 because that 2 is what's messing us up. So I'm going to take this 2 and multiply it by 3. I'm going to move it over here with a 3 just for a few minutes. So that's going to end up looking like x squared minus 5x minus 6. Now we have what looks like a plain Jane trinomial because I have a 1 out front. right? So plain Jane trinomial means I can go straight to parentheses with an x in there and I'm looking for numbers that are going to multiply to negative 6 but add to negative 5. Right? And that's going to end up being a negative 6 and a positive 1, right? Because I have to add to a negative 5. Okay, but this isn't my answer, okay? Because that's factoring this line. I need to make it factor the top line. So because I moved that 2 temporarily, I got to take that 2 back out. So I multiplied when I moved it, so now I'm going to divide to take it back out. And then we simplify. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. So I'm going to have an x minus 3. And then I can't simplify 1 over 2, and I can't leave it as a fraction. So this is where bottoms up comes in. I'm going to take the bottom and move it up in front of that x. So this ends up being a 2x plus 1. Okay, so this is hopefully review, right? But we have a couple ways of factoring that you got to be able to do because we're going to have to factor so we can see if anything cancels. Okay, so... We got three things. We're going to simplify, we're going to multiply, we're going to divide. All right? So to start with, if I want to simplify, I'm going to look for anything that cancels on top and on bottom. Before we can see if anything cancels, we got to make sure it's all the way factored. So for number one, I can't do anything with x plus 6. That's as simple as it gets. That's not one of my, you know, no GCF. It's not a trinomial. I don't have perfect squares. 
The bottom, though, is a trinomial, and it's a plain Jane trinomial. All right, so I'm going to factor this one. Go straight to my parentheses with x's. I want to multiply to a negative 6 but add to a positive five. So this is similar to the one we just looked at, but my signs are different. So now I gotta multiply to a negative, so I'm gonna have one positive and one negative, and I want to add to five. So that means I'm gonna have a positive six and a negative one, all right? Then I'm gonna look for anything on top and on bottom. So up top I have an x plus six, on the bottom I have an x plus six, so those are gonna cancel. I don't have anything to cancel with my x minus 1, so it, I can't get rid of it. It's got to stay in there. All right, so that means up top, I don't have anything left. It's not 0. It means it's a 1. And on the bottom, I have an x minus 1. So there's my simplified fraction. All right, for the second one, x minus 4, simple as it gets. On the bottom, it's not a trinomial, right? And I don't have perfect squares, but I do have GCF. They have something in common, right? So I'm gonna factor the bottom, right? So the biggest number that goes into both a three and a 12 is three. And then they both have X's, right? They both have at least one X, right? So I'm gonna take out that one X that they both have, right? And then three divided by three is one x squared divided by x is just x. I had two x's and I took one out. Negative 12 divided by 3 is a negative 4. And then x divided by x is 1. So they, I took that x out. So I just factored out my GCF here. Now I have an x minus 4 up top and an x minus 4 on the bottom. Right? So that means I don't have anything except a 1 left on top. You never have a 0. It's always going to be at least a 1. And then on the bottom, I'm just left with this 3x here because that x minus 4 went away. Okay, and then for the third one, I've got x squared minus 25. I don't have a GCF, they don't have anything in common, and it's not a trinomial, but I have a difference, and I have two perfect squares, right? So the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 25 is 5. So that means the top one here is going to factor to x plus 5, x minus 5. Okay, on the bottom, I got another plain Jane trinomial, so I want to multiply to 25 and add to negative 10. So that's going to be an x minus 5 and an x minus 5. All right, so I have 1x minus 5 up top and 1x minus 5 on the bottom, but only one of these cancels, right, because I need the exact same thing on top and on bottom if something else is going to cancel. All right, so then I have an x plus 5 left on top that I can't get rid of, and one of the x minus 5s on the bottom that I can't get rid of. And there's my simplified fraction. Okay, when I multiply, okay, multiplying these fractions is the exact same thing as simplifying. I just have multiple fractions to look for top and bottom uh, items that cancel. So for number 1, the 1 is as simple as it gets. I can't do anything with a 1, and I can't do anything with that x plus 10. It's not one of my patterns that I can look for a factor. Okay, the 10x plus 30, though, I do have something in common. I have a 10. So if I take out a 10, all right, 10 divided by 10 is 1, so that leaves me with just an x, and 30 divided by 10 is 3. All right, the only thing that's the exact same thing on top and bottom now is the x plus 3. So that leaves me with 1 times 10 up top, which is just 10, and x plus 10 on the bottom. Okay, now, big thing here. You cannot cancel these 10s. They're not the same. You cannot break apart the x plus 10. That's one factor. They have to stay together the whole time. The only thing that cancels out an x plus 10 is another x plus 10. Right? So they don't cancel. That's as simple as we can get. Okay, for number 2, 45x squared, I can't factor that. It's by itself. There's nothing to do. x minus 9, I can't factor that one. It's by itself. All right, so then that means for x squared minus 5x minus 36, it's a plain Jane trinomial. So that means I'm going to have two parentheses with an x in them. I want to multiply 2 of 36, add to a negative 5. All right, so that's going to end up being, let's see, 9 and 4 negative 9, positive 4. Okay, the bottom's not a trinomial, and it's not 
uh, subtraction. So the only option I have is GCF. Okay, 3 and 12 have a 3 in common. And they both, both of these have at least x squared. They at least have two x's. So that's going to be what they have in common. 3 divided by 3 is 1. I have three x's. I took two out, so I'm left with an x by itself. 12 divided by 3 is a 4. And then I had two x's, and I took two out, so that's all that's left. All right, so remember, I'm looking for top and bottom anywhere. All right, so for example, I have an x minus 9 on this side, and on the bottom, an x minus 9. Doesn't matter that they're different fractions. All right, and then I also have uh, an x plus 4 on top and on bottom. And I also have x squared on top and on bottom. So I'm left with a 45 over 3. All right, so we got 45 over 3. Well, 45 divided by 3 is 15. So my answer is just 15. All the x's canceled and went away. Okay, and then for our third one, same thing. x plus 1, I can't do anything with it. That's as simple as it gets. 3x minus 15, I have a GCF of 3. All right, if I take out a 3, I'm left with x minus 5. All right, 8x minus 80. I got a GCF again. If I take out an 8, I'm left with x minus 10. And then on the bottom, we got a plain J. I'm going to add my x's in there. I want to multiply to a negative 10, but add to a negative 9. So that's going to be a negative 10 and a positive 1. All right, so x plus 1's are going to go away. x minus 10's are going to go away. So I'm left with 8 over 3 times x minus 5, and 8 over 3 doesn't simplify. So that's my answer. Okay, three more. All right, dividing. Same thing as multiplying, but before I do anything, I have to copy, change, flip, just like we did with our fractions before. All right, so make sure with your division, you copy, change, flip, or you might call it keep, change, flip, or you know whatever your saying is that you want to use. Okay, so before I even factor, I'm going to copy the first fraction, change to multiplication, flip the second fraction. Okay, I can't factor 4x, that's simple as it gets, can't factor x minus 6, and 8x minus 48 has a GCF. So if I take out an 8, I'm left with 8 minus 6, and then I can't do anything with the 4x. All right, so looking for something on top and on bottom, I got an x minus 6 on top and on bottom and a 4x on top and on bottom. So I'm left with an 8 on top and a 1 on the bottom, which is just 8. All right, for the second one, all right, the first part, oh, sorry, before we factor, we're going to copy, change, flip. So I got x squared minus 2x minus 15 over 8x plus 20, copy the first one, change to multiplication, flip the second one. So 4x plus 10 over 2. All right now we can factor. This top one is a plain Jane trinomial. I'll come off to the side here. I'm running out of room. I want to multiply to negative 15, but add to negative 2. It's going to be a negative 5 and a positive 3. All right, on the bottom, we've got a GCF. Okay, but it's not 8. It's not always going to be that number that's out front. I want the biggest number that goes into both 8 and 20. So I can start. They're both even, so I know 2 goes into them. But there's a bigger number. 4 also goes into 8 and 20. So that's going to be the number that I take out. Right? If I take out a 4, 8 divided by 4 is 2. 20 divided by 2 is 5. I can't take out an x because a 20 doesn't have a variable. Okay? Up top here, got another GCF, but it's not 4. This one's going to have a GCF of 2. If I take out a 2, I'm left with 2x plus 5. All right. Then I have a 2x plus 5 on the top and the bottom. I got a 2 on top and on bottom, and that's all I got. So up top, I have an x minus 5 and an x plus 3, and on the bottom, of 4. And you don't have to multiply it back out. You can leave it as x minus 5 times x plus 3. Okay, and one more. All right, this one's got a little more factoring to do, but first we're going to copy, change, flip. So I'm going to copy the first fraction. 
change to multiplication, and flip the second fraction. All right. Now to factor the first one. This is a trinomial, but it's not plain Jane. Okay, so I'm actually I'm going to switch colors here and come down to where I have some more room. All right, so I'm going to factor the 2x squared minus x minus 15 down here on the bottom. All right, this one I'm going to have to do bottoms up or your x method, whatever you want to do. All right, so I'm going to start by getting rid of the 2. So I got x squared minus x, and I multiply. So it's going to be a minus 30. Well, now it's plain Jane. So I'm going to go to my parentheses, and I want to multiply to a negative 30, but add to a negative 1. So that's going to be negative 6, positive 5. All right, but I'm not done yet part that everybody wants to miss, you have to take that 2 back out because you moved it, now we got to take it back. So I'm going to divide both of these by 2. Okay, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Right, and then I can't do 5 divided by 2, so I'm going to move the 2 up front. So I got 2x plus 5. All right, so this one factors to x minus 3 times 2x plus 5. The one on the bottom is plain Jane. So I want to multiply to a negative 3, but add to a negative 2. Let me get my parentheses here. Uh, so that's going to be a negative 3 and a positive 1. Okay, this one, right, is not a trinomial. I don't have a GCF, but I do have subtraction. And both of these are perfect squares. Remember, square root of 1 is 1. Square root of x squared is x. So I can go straight to my parentheses. And you can use a pattern, but it has to go in order. It's always the first one plus the second one, first one minus the second one. So it's going to be a 1 plus x and a 1 minus x instead of the x plus 1, x minus 1. All right, and then on the bottom, I've got another bottoms up. All right, so we'll come down here. All right, and I'm going to start by multiplying by 2. All right, and then I've got my parentheses because it's plain Jane, but this time I want to multiply to a negative 10 and add to a positive 3. So that's going to be a positive 5 and a negative 3. And then I got to divide by that 2. All right, whatever number is out in front, we got to divide by. Okay, I cannot simplify 5 over 2, so we're going to do bottoms up. And I also can't simplify 3 over 2, so I'm going to have to do bottoms up again. Anytime you can't simplify, we got to do bottoms up. Okay, so then this one simplifies to 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 3. All right, so then we're going to come back to, what on earth? This is supposed to be a 2. Goodness gracious. My apologies. It's going to be a negative, or a positive 5 and a negative 2. Oops. So then when I simplify, I end up with an x minus 1. I thought something looked wrong there. All right, so I got 2x plus 5 and an x minus 1. Sorry about that. All right, so on top, I have x minus 3. On the bottom, I have an x minus 3. Okay, I have a 2x plus 5 and another 2x plus 5. Uh, I have an x plus 1 which is the same as 1 plus x because addition, order doesn't matter. It's the same thing. 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2. So those are going to cancel. But with subtraction, it's different, right? 2 minus 3 is different than 3 minus 2. So these don't cancel the same way. So right now I'm left with a 1 minus x up top and an x minus 1 on the bottom. But it does simplify. Okay, if I rewrite it so that my x is first, this is the same as negative x plus 1 over x plus 1. I just switched these, just so that the x was in the same spot. All right, and now, because these are the exact opposite signs, so I have a negative x and a positive 1, a positive x and a negative 1, these are going to end up simplifying to negative 1 every time. So anytime you have the same thing on top and bottom, but opposite signs or subtraction with reversed order, it's going to cancel to a negative 1. Okay? So simplify. If it's on top and bottom, it cancels. Multiply. If it's on top and bottom of either fraction, it cancels. And division, you copy, change, flip, 
and then you cancel if it's on top and on bottom.